In this video, I'm going to share the three key principles you need to follow to create outstanding 3D scenes. These principles include crafting depth, mastering smooth movements, and creating seamless transitions. Stick around until the end to learn exactly how to apply these techniques, and now let's dive right in. Okay, so first we're gonna jump straight into the first principle that I mentioned, which is creating depth inside our scene. As you may see, I have already prepared a scene by adding a simple shape element and a background that we're gonna work with. So the first thing to do would actually be setting these two layers to 3D. I am immediately gonna change the perspective here so you can see what's going on. And I'm gonna separate this background from this shape layer by pressing P on the background layer. We're gonna push it far behind so we can create depth. Now hit S for scale and scale it up. That looks good to me, so I'm gonna leave at that now to be able to create depth we're gonna have to duplicate this shape layer multiple times and then spread them evenly across the 3d space so let's head to the project panel right here you can duplicate the shape by hitting ctrl d and i can do it a few more times now you can drag the second shape inside a timeline make sure it's set to 3d i'm gonna drag it to the right press p for position and then position it far behind the first layer i'm gonna drag it up a bit play around with it a little i'll just get into these pre-comp to change a number here and now everything else that you have to do is actually take Take all of these leftover layers, drag them inside the scene, and then spread them evenly across the 3D space. And right after we're done positioning our layers into the 3D space, we can now focus on creating our second important principle, which is very smooth camera movements. To do that, we firstly have to add a camera into our scene. So press right click, new camera. We're gonna choose a two node camera and a preset of 50. Everything else you can leave as it is and press okay. And now, as you can see, we have a camera inside our scene. To operate with this camera, we're not gonna be using the camera itself. We're going to be using multiple null objects stacked on each other. The reason why is so we can overlap them and therefore creating a continuous movement without stopping the camera. So press right click again, new null object. Make sure the null is a 3D layer as well. And now we're going to parent the camera to our null. Now we can press P for position, set a keyframe and push it a little bit forward. And now go back with the camera. And now if we play the video, we're going to see how the camera moves from the backhand position to the front one. But it looks all dull and not smooth enough. So to be able to make the movement smooth, you're going to select the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. Now when we play the video, you're going to see how it looks much smoother, but we're not nearly done yet. First, I'm going to select this background and scale it up a bit because it's a bit out of the frame. And now I'll go to the second keyframe and I'm just going to make sure it's zoomed in a little, just like this. I think this looks good. And now let's select the keyframes and click on this graph editor icon. And I'll simply select the graph once again. I'm going to drag this handle to the left and also adjust the left one as well. So that way we've ensured that the movement starts slowly at the beginning then it reaches its climax right here and then starts to slow down and if we now play the video it looks like this the next thing i'd like to do is to shift the camera to this shape right here so we're gonna do it by adding a new null object let's make sure it's the 3d layer as well and let's use this pick whip icon to parent the first null to the second one now let's press p for position set a keyframe go a bit further and now make sure we zoom in on this shape right here let's try to center it a little now select the keyframe again an easy ease go into the graph editor and adjust it a little like this and now you're simply gonna have to overlap these keyframes and adjust the graphs to your liking depending on what kind of movement you want to have once we play the video we're gonna see how we created a very smooth transition between shape one and shape three again the reason for that is because we're stacking multiple null objects on top of each other so that these keyframes or rather motions overlap so there's no stopping in between the movements so if i decided to remove this top null object and use only this bottom one one right here so let's center it like this now we're gonna see how the movement makes a full stop right here and then proceeds that's not what we want at all we want the movement to keep going we want to make it as seamless experience as possible and this is by far the best method that you can use for this okay so once we're happy with the first movement that we've created we can now focus on creating the next one. So we can select this null object, duplicate it, press U to see all the keyframes, delete these keyframes, parent the previous null to the next one, select a new one, press P for position, set a keyframe, go a bit further, and now let's find a new target. So if we take a look here, I wanna focus on this shape layer six right here. So let's position the camera a little, and this is what I'm happy with. So again, the same procedure, we're gonna easy ease the keyframes, select them and open the graph editor, tweak it up a little, perhaps even drag this handle and make some kind of a mid peak. You can basically tweak up these graphs however you want until you're actually happy with what you've created. And now that I'm happy with how the movement looks, I'm gonna add one more thing that is basically a game changer. And that is enabling motion blur in every shape layer that we've created. That's gonna make each movement even smoother and sell the effect completely. 
And now one last thing that you can do to make this movement even cooler is keyframing rotation. So let's select the first null and hit R and keyframe the Z rotation. Press U to see all the keyframes and I'll drag that keyframe here. And at the beginning, we can now tweak up the rotation a little. And now for this to work properly, you're gonna have to apply the same graph you had at your position to your rotation. To do that, I'm gonna use flow. So select these keyframes. I can read the values here and I'll simply select these two and apply them. And now it looks something like this. It's much cooler, isn't it? And I can repeat the same thing on the second null. So press R for rotation, keyframe Z rotation, press U again, and now go to the last keyframe. And now we can use a slight rotation. Again, I'm gonna select these keyframes, read values, and then apply them to the rotation keyframes. Now we can do the same thing for our last null. And I'm thinking we can even make this shape slide in from the bottom. So we're gonna select it, press P for position, set a keyframe, go a bit back and place it out of the frame. Separate these keyframes a little. You can easy ease them and play with the graph. We can create some kind of a mid peak on this graph right here. And this is how everything looks like in the end. So now that we're done with our second principle of creating a very smooth movement, let's focus on the third one, which is creating seamless transitions. So to be able to show you the principles of creating the seamless transitions, in the meantime, I have added the second background inside our scene. I have positioned it inside the 3D space, as you can see right here. And I've also animated one of those elements that we used before. And the last thing I did is that I added a new null object. I used the exact same principle to create this type of movement as we did before in the video. And now when I play the video, you're going to see how it transitions from scene A to scene B. It does look fine, but it could look a lot better. To make it look better, we're going to be using opacity keyframes, which is a key to making seamless transitions. So instead of this background already being here, we're going to go down, we're going to press T for opacity. Let's set a keyframe, push it a bit further and now set it to zero. Now let's select them and easy ease them. And now if we play it, we're going to see how it looks much smoother but that is still not enough we can actually make it better so the basic goal would be as the camera is moving backwards we're also going to be decreasing the opacity of the scene a so that it all blends in very nicely at the end so select shape one hold shift and select every other layer except the last one press t for opacity set a keyframe now go further until this one and now select opacity keyframes to zero and i also forgot to do it on the background layer so we're going to press t again set a keyframe go to the end and set it to zero now we can select all of these keyframes including the background ones and press f9 to easy ease them we could also bring these a little closer together and now to make everything look even better than this we can offset these opacity keyframes depending on which object is the furthest away from the camera as it's moving so for example as the camera starts moving away the furthest object from this camera is the background so we're going to make sure to offset these opacity keyframes to so that the background disappears earlier than other elements. And now we're gonna repeat the same thing to each shape layer right here. So here we can see the shape seven is the furthest away next. So we're gonna offset its keyframes a bit to the left like this. Now should be our example six. And now the rest of the elements too. And if we now play the video, we're gonna see how the transition looks 10 times better. Of course, we can make this even better with more tweaking, but we're all gonna have to agree that it looks really good now. Now at the end, to add a little bit more motion to everything, we can open the camera settings open transform and hit alt stopwatch next to this point of interest here we can type wiggle and in the brackets we're gonna put something like 2 comma 15 so basically the first value represents the intensity of the wiggle and the second one basically represents how far the wiggle is going to be moving. As you can see now, we've made the whole scene wiggle a bit, which makes the movement even better. And at the end, to spice up the whole scene, you can add an adjustment layer, make sure it's above everything, and then add the effect like posterize time to it. Let's set it to about 16. We could also add noise to it. I'm going to set it at around 7%. And if you wanted to spice it up even more, you could click on the camera options and turn the depth of field option on. If I switch the two views and rotate the camera a bit, and if I play with this focus distance value and set it to approximately the same Z value as where this example one is, and therefore I play around with the aperture levels, we're gonna notice that everything that is in the focus distance remains very clear. And as I play around with the aperture values, everything outside of that focus distance remains blurry. So for example, at the beginning, you could focus on this object right here, keyframe aperture and focus distance. And then as the camera comes to this object, you could set keyframes again and make it focus on this one that is also another option that you don't necessarily have to be doing i simply wanted to show you to you so you know what's possible and if we looked at the animation now with all of these depth of field keyframes it really boosts the scene up and makes it look much more realistic and that's how the
the animation turned out. I hope you learned something new and found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the like button for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.